We love him this morning. We lift him up. We exalt him this Sunday morning. Oh, I just feel this presence. Can we just love the Lord tomorrow? Can we just love the Lord? Go ahead. We love you, Jesus. God, I worship you and I praise you this morning. And I long for that day, God. Lord, as John said, come quickly, Lord. Hallelujah. Keep us until that day, God. Help us to stand firm, God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. How many love the Lord this morning? Give God another hand of praise with you. long we're going home. Amen. 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 You have your Bibles this morning. I'd like you to go with us to the book of Galatians. Amen. And I know the time is sort of getting late this morning, but I do want to preach this book to you this morning with the help of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Some stuff I had wrote down, I guess I just left it at home, but it'll be all right. In Galatians chapter 5, beginning with verse 22, verse 23 this morning. We'd like to read from there this morning. Amen. Also, St. John chapter 15 and verse 16. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Meekness and temperance. Against such there is no law. In John chapter 15 and verse 16 this morning. The words of Christ written in red. Said you have not chosen me. But I have chosen you and ordained you. That you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he will give it you. Let us pray this morning. Father God in heaven, I love you this morning, Lord, and I thank you. Lord, for you have blessed us, Lord, above and beyond measure this morning. And Father God, I just honor you and I praise you this morning, Lord Jesus. Lord, I realize I'm nothing without you this morning, Lord, and apart from you, I can do nothing. But Lord, I need you this morning, Lord. We need each other, Lord, as my brother shared with us in the Sunday school lesson this morning. Lord, we need each other. I pray, oh God, help us today, Lord. If you don't help us, Lord, there's no use in me trying to do anything, Lord. Lord, if you don't anoint me this morning, Lord, there's no sense in me trying to preach, Lord. Because it is the anointing, Lord, that breaks the yoke of bondage. Father God, and I need that Holy Ghost anointed power from on high. Use thy servant this Sunday morning, Lord. Let me be a mouthpiece, Lord, through which your spirit would flow and your word would come forth like rivers of living waters that have been shut up in my soul. I love you this morning. I praise you, Almighty God. I feel your presence, Lord. I feel that sweet anointing even now in the house. And oh, God, I desire today to do your will. I desire to preach under the power and the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Under the power of the Holy Ghost of God. Lord, to be that vessel unto honor, sanctified and holy and meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good good and holy work. I love you this morning, my Lord, and I praise you, Jesus. Now, Lord, for all that's said and done and accomplished this day, Lord, I'll be careful to give your name praise and honor and glory for it all. In Jesus' name we do pray. 
Amen and amen. Shake a couple hands. Tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. Amen. In Romans 7 and verse 4, I'd like to read one other scripture. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. I, I want to speak to us on spiritual fruit this morning. <laughs> On our lives being productive, you know, to be fruitful <coughs> means to be productive, to be fertile, to be prolific, to be profitable. Amen. And I, I want to share with you, I'm going to do some reading in just a little bit, but um, about some men whose lives were very fruitful. And you know, it's important that we bring forth fruit, Amen. good fruit, profitable fruit. Fruit that is prolific, fruit that is productible, fruit that uh, is profitable, that will bless others, that will help others, that our lives uh, not only be fruitful, but that our lives would be a light in a world so full of darkness that others would see that light, that fruit, amen, uh, of the love and the joy of the Lord. I read to you about the nine fruits of the Spirit, but I just want to talk to you this morning on spiritual fruit, amen. I begin to think about just the natural fruit this morning. If I could just give you a quick survey here just for a moment. Some of you probably know this stuff. But I just thought, well, you know, Lord, how do we keep fresh fruit? How do we keep it fresh? So I looked up a few things. And to keep tomatoes fresh, you keep them out of the fridge. This may be a little different from some of you all's way of thinking. Each fruit produces, uh, produces a type of gas. I can't remember the exact name of that gas. Secondly, you wrap lettuce in paper towels before putting them into the fridge. It dries up the water. Thirdly, I found that we put, and I, this was new to me, bananas into the fridge. The outside turns dark, but the inside will stay fresh. Fourth, you freeze fruits and veggies after chopping them up. Some of you ladies are learning something. <laughs> Fifthly and lastly, I thought this was pretty good. Before you do your strawberries, you give them a hot bath before storing them. It's called thermotherapy. It helps to take care of the gas that it produces and also thought about... Uh, one fellow said, your best friend for your potatoes, ladies, is an apple. Put an apple in there with your potatoes and it helps keep them fresh. So I thought about the different ways of keeping natural fruit fresh. And this morning I want to take that and compare it to our lives as spiritual. Keeping our lives fresh, fruitful, productive, if you will. I begin to think about through the times of history. And I'm going to share about a couple of men that some of you that love history like I do will remember a man named John Wesley. John Wesley in 1703 and through 1791, born in England. He was productive in helping get what we call the Methodist church or people together. Matter of fact, in his time of prayer and study and getting together with different ones, this group was later called Methodists because of their manner of life. But the Bible tells us as I study history, John Wesley and his brother went to America as missionaries and to the Indians in Georgia. And they met a group of people whose faith and spiritual life, listen now, impressed 
him greatly. The missionary trip was a failure and Wesley wrote of it in 1738 when he returned to England. But upon his return to England, he joined a meeting there in Aldgate Street. At the meeting, they were reading Luther's preface. And at that time, he said in his heart, and how his heart was strangely warmed. Listen to this, and this is the part I want to get to. This experience made him an evangelist, preaching the gospel all over England. Then it pleased God, he declared, to kindle a fire which I trust, he said, shall never be extinguished. This fire was so great, his enthusiasm for the preaching was inexhaustible. Remember, he didn't have what we have today, cars and all this stuff. He traveled over 250,000 miles, mostly on horseback. Spoke to gatherings and open air meetings up to 30,000. On 42 occasions, he crossed the Irish Sea. And it was calculated that he preached over 40,000 sermons. Listen to this if you think I'm long. Some of which lasted for three hours. John Wesley finally he died in 1791 at the age of 88. But here's what I want you to understand this morning, talking about a fruitful life. The impact of John Wesley can still be felt today. As with most great movements of God, he was able to rekindle the faith of, a, of the common man. His evangelistic mode established methods that are still used today. However, his greatest contribution was in the area of personal salvation. There was a time when there was two questions that were asked to Wesley. And in answering these two questions or problems, Wesley preached three great truths. And this was it. The necessity of personal experience of God's saving grace. For sins committed. And I want you to notice this is John Wesley. I preached last Sunday on sanctification. He's the man that talked about this. The cleansing power of the Spirit to remove inbred sin through sanctification. That the life of the believer must be worthy of God. He went on to preach and to talk about sanctification. Removing the inbred sin. It is still being taught today. I'm talking to you about spiritual fruit this morning. There's another gentleman. I want to share just a little bit of him with you this morning. I believe his name is uh, George Whitfield. Some of you have read about George Whitfield. George Whitfield was ordained as a deacon in 1736. He began his powerful work as a preacher. Listen to this. On the Sunday morning of his ordination, Whitfield preached his first sermon at which it was said that 15 people were driven mad. This emotional response to his preaching became a hallmark of his ministry. He preached all over the world. In September of 1770, he was appointed as minister of Newburyport, Massachusetts. The Saturday before his appointment, he was persuaded to preach in the open air. When he arrived, he was so, listen, he was so fatigued that one of his friends said to him, Sir, you are more fit to go to bed than to preach. Agreeing with his friends, Whitfield raised his hands and prayed, Lord Jesus... I am weary in thy work, but not of thy work. If I have not yet finished my course, let me go and speak for thee once more in thy fields. Seal thy truth and come and die. He preached that day from 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 to a great crowd with great fervor and effect. Returned to Newport, Newberry Port, went to bed and died early. The next morning. Thank you, Lord. These men that I could go on with. Jonathan Edwards. One of the greatest philosophers and theologians of his time. All of these men were spiritual leaders in their day. And their work is still being fruitful. And taught today in this society that you and I live in. Amen. What are you telling me brother John? Their lives are fruitful. 
We still read about them today after all of these years. I taught last Sunday on sanctification, some of his greatest work. And today it's still being carried on. But I want to speak to you today and tell you how important it is for our lives to be fruitful and productive. It is important that you and I bear good fruit. Amen. That people can look at our lives and see a life that is devoted to God. A life that is devoted to God and God only. A life that is productive. A life that is fruitful. A life that is pleasant. A life that people can look at us, Brother Jody, and say, there's a child of God. I know that man or woman has been born again, washed in the blood, because their life is bearing their fruit and their lives are productive. I know this is a little deep for some this morning but it's imperative in a world that's so full of corruption so full of evil we must stand out we must be a separated people we must be a people that others can see the love of Jesus Christ in our lives it may not be much shouting this morning, but I just want you to listen to me. And I want you to ask yourself the question this morning. When you're sitting here in this church, are you a productive Christian? Is your life producing spiritual fruit? Not just for yesteryears. I love to read about these men from yesteryears. I love history, amen. But the thing about it is, is that they're gone now, amen. But the legacy of their work is still being carried on today. I wonder after you and I are left this world, can people look back at our lives and say that was a productive man of God. That was a woman of God. Their lives were productive. Their lives were fertile. Their lives, amen, represented what they lived. Lived. Can I come by and tell you today It's imperative That whatever your mouth says Your life should back it up You should be men and women of God That whatever this word says You see it's easy to tell other people How to live But when the rubber meets the road I want to ask you How are you living this morning How has your life been productive It's other people seeing Jesus Christ In your life I read to you about the nine fruits of the Spirit. About bringing forth much fruit. Jesus went by a tree one time and it was dead. He was looking for some fruit and found none on it and he cursed it. When they came back by the next day, it was dried up from the roots. It was dead. Because it produced no fruit. I wonder today, and this is just a simple message to you this morning. I wonder today, can people see Jesus in our lives? When we're at Walmart, when we're on our job. Mm, the Lord is dealing with me about some things. Just bear with me a minute. It's important to make sure what we do on our jobs represent Jesus Christ. Huh? You see... Can, can I stop here and tell you, when we get away from the house of God, and when we get from around God's people, it's easy. It's easy to let our lives deceive us. Our mouths are saying one thing, and our lives are living and portraying. It's a double standard, and God will not tolerate that kind of business. Amen. We need men and women that will stand up. Listen, when I go to town, if I want a banana, I go to where the bananas are, and it's got to be a ripe one. It's got to be a yellow banana. If I want a delicious apple, I go where the red Washington delicious apples is, and I know by their color that it's red, and I can feel it. Go, my son of a I can feel that apple and know that it's an apple. I can look at it from a distance and say that's an apple over there. That's a banana over there. That's a lettuce over there. Why? Because what they are distinguish who they are. And I can go by and I can check that stuff out and find out if it's fresh, Brother Jody. Any of y'all ever done the fresh test? Anybody ever walk by and squeeze the Charmin? 
Come on. Go buy and mash that bread. It's just habit forming, isn't it? When I pick up a sack of potatoes, I want to look, brother, and make sure there ain't that smell in there. I used to work in that department. And if there's a funny smell to that bag, I know something's wrong. There's a rotten one in the bunch, ain't there? Um, oh, y'all got to help me now. <laughs> Hallelujah. All I got to do is walk by, and if I get a good smell of that thing, I'll know, brothers and sisters, that something's wrong because it don't smell like a potato. You know, we went by just yesterday, my wife and I, and, and my son works, son-in-law works with turkeys. We call him Turkey Tom. And we went by one of the fields yesterday evening when they clean out the barns. Some of you around Columbus County, you know that smell. It just gets in your nostrils and lingers. And Sister Terry, when I went by that field, I saw, mm. my wife started speaking in tongues. She said, little, 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 little. I said, oh my God, what's happening here? And my daughter's in the back seat. She dies laughing. Because she knows that smell. And she said, Mom and Daddy, you ought to come by here in the morning times. Their steam comes up out of that field where all that stuff's been dumped. Amen. And some of you say, Oh, God, but you're eating it. It's on that produce. Hello? Y'all cover your mouth and faces if you want to. Amen. And we come back through there last night and I got another good whiff of it. Amen. And I thought, my God, no wonder people are dying. Makes me want to come a vegetarian. Huh? Yeah, they do, told the brother. That, that fruit, yep, yep. They spray all that stuff. Amen. And we consume it daily. Amen. But I'm telling you, I can go by and we see that kind of stuff and, and we check the fruit, we check the bread. Why? Because we want it fresh. I wonder this Sunday morning when men and women look at our lives, if they walk by and it's like that sack of potatoes, there's a strange smell, there's a strange odor coming from that individual. You know what they're going to say? That individual is not fresh. They need to go take a bath. They need to wash. There's something wrong in the bag. There's something wrong with the merchandise. It's rotten to the core. I come out to tell you this morning, it's time that the children of God lift up your head. Oh, hallelujah. Get washed in the spiritual word and come forth fresh and productive and futile for God's mercy and grace. Work on me, Lord. Work on me. Ah, boy, this is getting better all the time. Ah, what is it, children of God? We need to be fresh in our relationship with God Almighty. Has your relationship become dull? Has it become fruitless? Is your life no longer productive in the work of the Lord? Or you've just become self-satisfied? Self-sufficient. I'm all right just like I am. I don't need to move up. I don't need to go anywhere. Brother Small, I'm okay. You know as well as I knew, water that sets still becomes stagnant. Has a smell to it. It has a stench to it. If we're not careful for God, we come to a place in our relationship with Him that we become stale, we become stagnant, and we're no longer producing fruit. You know, there comes a time when, when a man that takes care of the fruit trees, there's something he has to do ever so often. He has to prune those fruit trees. 
he's got to come through and he and he checks those limbs and, and if there's nothing there and it's not productive and it's not fruitful brother Jody he takes his, his axe if you will and he chops off those limbs hey man you know why because after a while when something is dead and you drag it around long enough it becomes a hindrance to you it becomes something that binds you it becomes something that binds you up and you can't do what you need to do for the Lord so can I tell you this Sunday morning if you're dragging around dead weight if you're dragging around some dead fruit it's time to go back to the pruner let's go back oh hallelujah it's got to be like the router said I need to go down to the potter's house and let me put me on the spinning wheel and let him mold me and shake me until I become pleasing in the side of my master I wonder this Sunday morning where are we at in our relationship with God are we productive Christians or have we become just self satisfied saints of God when he prunes those trees it's not a pretty sight it's an ugly tree when he gets done with it but he knows the next year or either the second year He's going to have more fruit that he'll know what to do with. Huh? What's all that got to do with the message today? Sometimes you and I go through seasons in our lives that we become stale. We become stagnant. We just come sitting in the preacher hunt. And we need to go back to the pruner and say, prune me, Lord. Prune me. Cut off the dead weight. Cut off the dead limbs, Lord. I want to be productive for you again. Can I ask you just one simple question this morning? Where are you at in your relationship with God? Where are we at, folks? These preachers know that I'm telling you the truth. We're living in a society right now when most church people have become complacent. They've been around so long they've become a stench instead of a blessing. They reject everything the church wants to do or try something new. Hello, come on, y'all stay with me. Huh? They're always there. It's always what a songwriter used to say some years ago. One bad apple can spoil a whole bunch, girl. I don't know no more, but amen. Thank God, right? Huh? Preacher said right, amen. You got to get it out. That's why a produce manager, if you ever watch them, every day they're going by the produce rack. And they're pulling this, Brother Terry, and they're pulling that one. And they're flipping over those bags of potatoes and checking them. And if there's one in there bad, you know what he does? He goes to the, his office back there, his place where he works at. And he'll rip that bag open. And he's got to rewrap it and all that. But he's got to get that one bad one out of there. Amen. So it don't ruin everything else in the bag. You see, he is willing. Oh, thank you, Lord. This is getting better. He is willing to lose one. I said he's willing to sacrifice that one and get him out of there that the 90 and the 9 can be saved. Come on, somebody ought to help me preach this morning. I come by to tell you, if you're a bad apple this morning, you need to come on back. Hallelujah. You need to come on back to the pruner. You need to come on back to the produce manager and say, here am I, God. Take me as I am. Mold me. Work on me. Shape me, God, until I'm pleasing in your sight. Take away the stench. Take away the smell. Make my life to be productive. Make my life to be profitable for your service. We're in a place now, too many Christians are satisfied. We're not moving up. Somebody said, but I'm not going down either, preacher. No. You just stand where you're at. And when things come along that disturb your apple cart, then you can't deal with it. Amen? You can't handle it. Huh? You know, I don't want to be hard this morning, but I thought about Brother Barry. 
And I told Sister Mika, she, she, she said it to me. She said, Preacher, I asked God to save my daddy. She said, and he did what I asked him to do. Now, I won't ask him for anything else. I'm not going to ask him for anything else. I love my daddy. And she was crying. She said, I'll miss my daddy. But you know what, preacher? I'll be with him again. I'll be with him again. Why? Listen, I'm coming to tell you something. A man laying in a bed over there that can't get up and out of his bed. But yet, his life already has been productive. His life already has been a blessing. He's already touched people that some of you and I will never touch. I come by to tell you today, God is answering prayer. God is moving in the lives of those that are producing spiritual fruit. Of those, hallelujah, that are committed to his work. Preach, Brother John. Those that are, oh, hallelujah, that have been called by God. Or by God and walking in the light of the truth and being spiritual leaders right where they are. I can't ask you for nothing else, preacher. He's done what I've asked him to do. Can I tell you this morning, don't be sad. Huh? Yes, I know it's hard to lose a loved one. But just think about the joys that you're going to spend eternity with them. As long as your life is spiritual, fruit, and productive for the Lord. As long as you're producing good fruit. These men I read to you earlier, what they have to do with this preacher, it just goes to show you that our lives can speak even after we are gone. Huh? Some of the times, listen to me, we pray for folks, and we may never see them saved before we go into the grave. But Brother Hunt, I believe those prayers that the righteous pray will continue on and on. And does anybody know what I'm preaching to you about this morning? I believe those prayers will continue on and they will be productive and they will go forth and they will profit and they will bring forth blessings abundantly and those lives will flourish because somebody, the songwriter said, I'm glad somebody prayed for me. Somebody had me on their mind. Somebody sacrificed their time. Somebody got down on their knees and somebody prayed for me. I come, Shante. I come by to tell you this morning, if you'll obey God, and your lives will be spiritual and fruitful for the Lord after you're gone and the skin worms eat up your flesh the spirit that lived inside of you will continue on for the prayers of the righteous will continue to prevail after we're gone it's important that people be able to look at us and say you know what they were fruitful for the Bible said in Psalm 92, 13 and 14, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Verse 14 said they shall still, listen, bring forth fruit in an old age and they shall be fat and flourishing. Don't count us old folks out quite yet. It's because of my forefathers that were before me Amen. is the reason where I'm at today. Amen, Don't count them out. Amen. Amen. Because, listen, just because there's snow on the mountain don't mean the fire is going out in the furnace. Come on, somebody ought to help me preach right here. I'm trying to hurry up this morning, but I got to get it in this morning. Listen, these old timers know what it is. They've been there. They've laid on their faces. They've fasted and they've prayed for this generation. And that's why I'm in this generation. I come by to tell you, I'm a part of that baby boomer generation. But more than that, I'm a part of God's creation. I'm a part of God's creation. I'm a part of his inheritance. I am that fruitful child of God. And though it gets old, he never gets old. There's fire in us. The power's in us. The anointing is there. And God is going to bless your life. But you got to stay fruitful. I believe in one place it's going to make an old man 
leap for joy. What did they say, preacher, about running through a wall and tearing down troops or something? Yeah. Why? Because our lives. I read to you about John Wesley. Huh? Man that traveled all those millions of miles. Preached over 40,000 sermons. Horseback. He didn't have ways to travel. He didn't have money. But his life was so fruitful. He's like my brother John the Baptist. Preaching in the desert. Huh? Out in that old wilderness. And because of his life being so fruitful. People came from everywhere. From the city sister. From the countryside. From the temples. They came everywhere. To hear the message that John had to declare. Why? Because there was something about John. Hallelujah. It wasn't his eloquent speech. He was not a man of eloquent speech. He was not a man of big words in society. He was not a man that dressed in three-piece suits. Hallelujah. A man that probably hadn't combed his hair in a few days. Hallelujah. But people came from everywhere, Brother Lance, because he had a message. Hallelujah. His life was so fruitful and productive that others in the town and the city and the temple said, you got to go. Go where? Let's go out into the wilderness out there in the wilderness of Judea and see a man hallelujah have you come to see a man dressed in camel's hair and raiment eating locusts and wild honey what have you come to see this morning what have you come to do children of God have you come to be productive have you come to be fruitful have your lives come to be what God would have them to be if that's the case I want you to stand up in this church and I want you to give God the greatest praise that you could ever give him because I want my life to be fruitful I want my life to be productive I want my life to be what he would have it to be. <laughs> Praise him. Come on, somebody. I'm not an old focus, but I wish, I wish that this generation had what that generation had. Come on, somebody. Huh? John's generation had the goods. John had the goods. Huh? The apostle Paul had the goods. Huh? Ain't no other like Paul. Huh? Man that wrote three-fourths of the New Testament in prison, incarcerated, being whipped and everything else. Huh? But he gave us the word. What are you telling me, Brother John? I don't know about you, but if I don't go in the rapture and have to go by the way of the grave first, I want people to be able to remember the life that I lived. I want my children, my daughters, and my grandchildren to know the life that I live, that it was fruitful. That my wife will know what her husband stood for. Sister Jane and my grandchildren will know what Papa stood for. And that people in my community will know what Brother McPherson stood for. I don't want them to look at my life and find some bad potatoes in my life. Huh? Every once in a while I got to go to God. You know, I told you about those bananas. Every once in a while I got to go to God and he puts me in the fridge. I got to bring this thing on in for landing. <laughs> Hallelujah. And every once in a while, Sister Vaughn, he got to put me in the fridge because I've turned a little dark on the outside. But when he puts me in the fridge of his spirit, he begins to freshen me. He begins to shake me. Good God Almighty, preach, Brother John. He begins to mold me and fashion me that when he takes me out of the fridge, and the fridge is the word of God Almighty, when he takes me out of the book, amen, and puts me back to where I need to be, my life will be free. 
fresh. My life will be fruitful, Brother Brandon. I will be productive. I will be a blessing to other people because I've been refreshed by his spirit. And my fruit is fresh. My fruit is clean. My fruit has been washed. My strawberries has had a hot bath of God's amazing grace and love. And when he's done with me, he puts me back out there and I can be productive. Don't let the whims of this world change you. Don't let society mold you and shape you into what they want you to be. If you're a banana, look like a banana. Taste like a banana. Huh? You're right, sister, because when they turn brown, I don't eat them. When they get my color, they got to go. Yeah. Amen. What you grin about, sister? You all right? All right. You got to go, ain't you, Terry May? Yeah. When I can walk by a plate of apples and grab one and my thumb goes in it, that's a problem. It's become soft and mushy. Huh? Only thing I want soft and mushy is my wife. Huh? She says she's trying to tone up and get hard. When she gets to feeling like me, we're in trouble. Amen. I'll leave that alone. Amen. No, she said that because two weeks ago, I finally, after all of these years, talked her into going to the gym with me a few days a week. I said, honey, you ain't got but one good lung. You really need some exercise in your life. And I've talked her into going to the gym, and she's doing... Preacher, she's about caught you. She's doing three miles on the treadmill now. Mile on the bicycle, amen. Hey, doing them leg machines and all that stuff with me now. Amen, and we're just having a good time in the Lord. But you know what? Our lives are being fruitful. Huh? Yeah, my wife's going up with me. Did I change because my wife started going? No. I'm still loud and boisterous. It don't make no difference. Huh? I still cut up and have fun with the guys, you know. Praise God. Hallelujah. Fresh and good for the soul. Amen. Huh? But, but I said all this to say this. Children of God, listen to me this morning. I told my wife about some things and some people that are, quote, in the church, but their mouth are saying something different. And they sit around that little table there in the gym. and Oh, they'll talk about the Lord to me, but when they get with a certain group, I hear a four-letter word every once in a while slip out of the mouth. And since I've come to the point, I can't call them brothers anymore. Huh? Preacher, oh, oh, you're being judgmental? Well, I won't have time because I keep here two more hours talking about judge, being judgmental. But I can't call them, Sister Ella, brothers and sisters anymore because their mouth is defiled. And if the mouth is defiled, the heart is deceitful. Preacher said this one, who can know the heart? It is I, the Lord thy God, that knoweth the heart. Listen, I don't care who you are. If you're going to be a child of God, when you get around your buddies and your friends on your job, you need to still be a child of God. You need to still be fruit for Jesus. I don't care where you go. I don't care what you're doing. You need to be fruit for Jesus. And let your fruit be washed and clean and have a good smell about it. Brother Anthony, when I hear that kind of stuff, I stay away from that stuff. It's just every once in a while, but it, it bothers me. Because if I go and sit down, listen to me, if I go and sit down, my fruit is going to come contaminated. Do I still love them? Yeah. Do I still pray for them? Yes. If they need me, I'd go to where they're at today. Come out from among the world. And be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you unto myself. And I will be your God. And ye shall be my children. It's important that we keep ourselves pure, folks. I talked this week right up from sanctification last week. Living a sexual pure life. I talked about that last week. Huh? Goes right into this morning's message. Having spiritual fruit.
in our lives. Can I tell you this morning, we don't have much longer. How many really believe that? If we believe that, what we ought to do? Live like it. I said if we really believe that, we ought to keep our nose in this book. Keep going back to the potter's house and saying, Lord, mold me and shape me. I don't know about you, but I need to go about it every day. Huh? Because I live in a world that's corrupt. And sometimes just going through, I just get spiritual filth on me. Come on, stay with me. Huh? It's like going by that field, just riding by it, got my nose, and that was it. Huh? That's right. By the time I got where I was going, I thought, that stink. Yeah. And I thought, and I got back to the house last night, and I talked to old Turkey Tom. And I said, Turkey Tom, tell me something, buddy. How do you tolerate that smell every day? And my daughter looked at me, and she said, Daddy, he don't even flinch. Stay with me. Exactly, sister. He said, I can go to work every day, walk right into that mess. I said, you wear a mask and thing? No. When you're cleaning out those buildings and the barns? He said, no. I come home. I don't pay no attention. But I ride by it, and it takes my breath. What are you telling me, Brother John? If you stay out of the word and you stay away from church, and you quit praying. After a while you can walk by sin. And look at it and gaze upon it. And it will never affect you. You will never flinch the first time. The pornography. The, the, the vile sexual acts that are committed. Will not phase you. Hallelujah. The vulgarity that comes out of people's mouth. When they use God's name in vain. You won't even flinch anymore. Why? Because you become immune to it. Your life is no longer producing fruit. You have become immune to the world system. And you're no longer fruitful. Sin doesn't bother you. I told my wife just yesterday, I don't understand our generation of Christians that can go out and do the things that they do and still walk into the house of God on Sunday morning and shout. No fear of God. Well, preacher, it's a different day. I worked with a young man some few years ago. And I should have seen it coming then. He would take songs and put his own version to them. And he would use all kind of vulgarity. And he told me one day, he said, but Brother John, he said, uh, we don't consider that vulgarity anymore. Those four letter words. And now it's become prevalent among Christian folk. Slang words. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't have time to get into all this this morning. I'll just leave that with you. But I'm telling you this morning, when people look at our lives, and if that's what they see, they don't want you praying for them. You invite them to church and they say, what for? Come on, stay with me. Huh? You can't be in on Sunday and out on Monday. You can cover up sin But it'll be exposed eventually Amen. Come on somebody ought to help me I got a few more minutes here I said you can cover up sin But eventually it'll be exposed huh? For that that you do in the dark Shall be made manifest by the light huh? It will be revealed And when it does you'll be ashamed huh? Can I stop in here and inject just a thought for you Just it won't cost you nothing this morning. Hmm? Mamas, what you do, then baby girls will do. Amen. Huh? You lay up here and you lay up there, those babies will lay up here and they'll lay up there. Mama, you did it. And then they see you in church on Sunday and you're acting all holy. Huh? Come on, y'all getting quiet now. Huh? 
those conversations, Daddy, that you have when Mama ain't around, that son, after a while, will start having those conversations. Come on, somebody ought to help me this morning. I'm still talking about spiritual fruit this morning. I'm telling us whatever you do, somebody will go behind you and do the very same thing, if not worse. And then we wonder sometimes why our children turn out like, why they don't want nothing to do with church. Can I just be plain? Because mom and daddy's been a hypocrite for years. I know this isn't pleasant to hear this morning and you'd have rather heard something else but I got to give you what God lays on my heart I wonder this morning how is your life before the Lord is it fruitful is it productive is it a blessing is others looking at you and saying you know what I'd really like to have some of that because it is a blessing to me it is a blessing to me. And, and, and I just want our lives to be productive as Christians, folks. I'm not here to get hard on you or nothing like that. I'm just here to help you this morning. And I gave you the fresh fruit test. You do it yourself. Can I interject this thought? What does God do when he comes by and check us? We check everything else, but what about when he checks us? What about when David said in Psalm 51, Search me, O God, and know my heart. See if there be any wicked way in me. Huh? I want God to search us this morning. I want God to examine me day in, Brother Marty, and day out. Because you know something, children of God, no matter what happens in this life, Brother Anthony, I got to make it. I've got to make it. Sister Davis, I've told others about it for years and years and years. And wouldn't it be sad that after preaching to others, Paul said, I myself become a castaway. <laughs> after all these years and I start losing my fruit, wouldn't it be sad? Amen. Wouldn't it be sad, folks? Lord, help. I'm asking you this morning, where are you at? How's your life? Sister Davis, come on, sister, if you would, please. I'm going to close. Not through, but I'll close. What are you telling me, Brother John? I just want others to see Jesus in us. I want our lives to be an example. Because it's so easy, it's so easy for something to happen and it'll destroy you. One slip and it'll destroy you. It'll destroy your testimony. That's that fruit I'm talking to you about. It'll destroy you. And others won't have anything to do with what you have. Sometimes it's not easy. I had a one of those same gentlemen. My wife and I got in the car the other afternoon or the other day there, Brother Lance, and he come running out there to me. He said, Preacher. He said, I probably know the answer. And the people will try you. He said, I probably know the answer, but I just want to know what you would tell me. I said, what is it, buddy? He said, is it okay for me to take my tithes and give it to the needy and help out somebody else? I blamed looked at him. I said, no, sir. That's not Bible. I said, the Bible said, bring ye all the tithes into the store." That there may be meat in my house and prove me here with self, the Lord. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out blessing that you cannot contain. Malachi chapter 3. What are you telling me, Brother John? And then he said, I gave you 90% to go out and help the orphans and the widows and all those others. That's Bible. He said, I thought that's what you were going to tell me. But Sister Doris, he wanted to see if that's what I was going to tell him. Or if I said, okay, buddy, you know what? God really understands. I'd be jeopardizing my fruit. And he would be saying, you know what? I can persuade that preacher. Because we buddies. 
And then when he walked off from the window, he said, thank you, preacher. You know why he thanked me? Because I stood for the word. I wouldn't let my life be jeopardized over my friendship with him. Because if it comes down to it, you know, I'll just have to lose a friend. Because there's one friend, I don't, Brother Chad, I don't never want to lose. I said, there's one friend that I don't ever want to lose, Brother Jody. His name is Jesus. Does anybody know Jesus in the chapter of Church of God of Prophecy? Stand up and let him know that you know him. I never want to lose his friendship. I never want to lose his friendship. Because just keep standing. I'm going to close. Because he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He's here for us. Families that are suffering this morning, that are going through some stuff right now, let me say to you, keep loving the Lord. Sister Jane, as hard as it is, keep loving Jesus, honey. Brother Barry, as hard as it is, Brother Joe, hard as it is, keep loving Jesus. Because if God takes him home in a few days, and I don't know how you've been praying, but that's been my prayer. I'm not ashamed to tell you because when I look at my brother and he's pleading and saying, God, take me home, my request is take him home, Lord. You've accomplished the work in his life. You've done what needed to be done, Lord. What needs to be done? Now, Lord, grant his request. Take him home. Don't let him suffer, Lord. So if I get a phone call this afternoon and he's gone home, it'll be all right. We'll cry and we'll hurt. But it'll be all right. Because just in a little while, the song said, just in a little while, shut my mind, I'm good. In a little while, our labors will all be over. And I'm going home to be with the Lord. Are you ready this morning? Are you ready in here? That's a question you've got to ask yourself. You don't have to answer to the preacher. You don't have to answer to the deacon board of this church. All you've got to do is answer to you and God. Am I ready? Is my life, God, what you would have it to be this morning? If not, this altar is open to you, ma'am. To you, sir. To you, young men, young women. This altar, I can't make you come this morning. I can't make you produce spiritual fruit. Only He can. Only He can. But I wonder where do you stand with God this morning? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Christians are praying. If there's one here under the sound of my voice this morning, and your life is not what God wants it to be if you're not producing that fruit that God wants you to produce. Maybe you did it one time, but you've lost it. Would you just slip up your hand and put it down? Bless you, baby. Is there another? God bless you. God bless you, son. Is there others? God bless you, mama. Is there another? Just be honest with yourself. This is just between you and God. Just between you and God. God bless you, Mother. Is there another? Hands are going up everywhere. I'll say it again. I don't want to miss heaven, folks, for nobody. As much as I love my wife and children, I can't miss heaven for them. And they feel the same way about me. What about it this morning? If you need to come down to this altar and pray, I'll pray with you and I'll pray for you. That's right. Come on. Come on, daughter. I need women of faith that trust God. Nobody knows this lady's circumstance but me and God. She's going through hell that I never wish nobody had to go through with. And I need some women out here that will pray with my sister. And you pray with compassion and you pray with love for her. Some of you younger ladies, I'd love for you to come down and pray with this daughter as well. Come on, sis, that's right. Some of you that have been through things that if I said it, you would know exactly what it is. You would know exactly. 
and you'd want somebody to pray for you. You'd want somebody to have some compassion for you. Come on, brothers, and pray for this young man here this morning. Come on. We've got some young ladies down here at the altar praying. Got another young man over here praying in the corner. We need some prayer warriors up here. We need some. Don't be ashamed. All of us are human. All of us go through hard times in our life. All of us go through stale places. And if God don't help us, we can't be helped. If God don't intervene, we can't make it. None of us. None of us. What about it? Are some more that would love to come and pray? Are there others that would love to just come and pray? Pray with her sister Megan. Just love her and hold her. Shut up, my young little boy. Shut up, my young little boy. Shut up, my young little boy. Shut up, my God, she's been broken.
you know, my brother taught this morning the Sunday school lesson. We need each other. No man is an island. No man lives and dies to himself. We need one another, church. And some of my brothers and sisters in here are hurting beyond measure that you'll ever know. That I know because they confide in me as their pastor. But they need us. Let's be compassionate. Let's be sensitive. Let's be fruit-bearing Christians that feel their pain and will be there for them. Would you do that? Does it hurt to pick up the phone and call them and let them know that you love them and you're praying for them? And I want you to know I'm always there for you. I told my wife, it seemed like in the last two weeks I've been pulled from here to yonder, but it doesn't matter. I want to be here for you. Not as just your shepherd, but to be here, somebody that we can confide in and love one another and help one another along the way. As I said this morning, I don't want to miss heaven, folks. And I don't want to see anyone in here miss heaven. The Lord is soon coming. God bless your heart this morning.